Hey folks, time for another Q&A on Earth's disaster cycle. Let's jump right into it here. I get a lot of questions that say, if the magnetic poles are moving, why does my compass still point north? Do you know what's interesting? Every single one of those questions comes from the United States. This is the United States. Canada is here. The magnetic pole was here and it's moving directly this way. If the magnetic pole is moving directly at you or directly away from you, the direction that your compass points isn't going to change. This is why in places like the UK or in Hawaii, you actually can notice a change in where north points in the sky or based on a landmark that you used to use from a certain location. Uh, every single one of those questions comes from the United States. And no, as long as the magnetic pole heads on that track, your compass is not going to change its direction. I get a lot of questions about sea level rise during the disaster. And this is mostly a function of, okay, well, this solar blast should melt a lot of water. How much of the sea is going to rise? Well, don't forget, the great solar flash does a whole heck of a lot of evaporation. And then there's a whole lot of freeze out as well. It's just dumped onto the land as snow and ice. And, you know, there's some modulation of sea level change when we look back through these cycles. But honestly, it's never the kind of thing where it's hundreds of feet all at one time. Yes, as we went from the last glacial maximum up to now, things have changed hundreds of feet, but that's 24,000 years. A glacial cycle to an interglacial we have now. And so, uh, no, I don't expect specific sea level rise to be a huge issue, even though for all intents and purposes, the tsunamis that are caused by the great catastrophe um, certainly are one of the major issues. Here's something interesting. We have talked about the great earthquake, and during this event, yeah, the entire world is going to shake. And we've talked about this in terms of why the deep underground military bases, or dumbs, are a dumb idea to be in. Um, but here's something else to consider. There's a reason why you turn off gas lines after an earthquake, because if they've ruptured at all, you have major chance of fires, even explosions. In addition to every structure being at fire risk from solar induction, if it has any wiring, if it has significant metal, things like that, every structure that has gas to it is at risk of fire and or maybe even explosion after the great earthquake. And so that's something to keep in mind. If you happen to get through this and, you know, you are able to stay in your castle, so to speak, you're planning on bugging in rather than bugging out, maybe turn off your gas line after that major event. Um, this one I kind of have to laugh at because I'm sure most of you guys know the answer to this. Where am I riding out the disaster? Observer Ranch, obviously. Um, the question came with a caveat. I'm, I'm sure you don't want to mention this publicly, blah, 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 blah. And no, I'm not scared to mention this publicly. And here's why. There's going to be virtually no travel after the disaster. But you, you think you're going to walk 800 miles in increased radiation and extreme weather conditions with everybody out there hungry, thirsty, dangerous? In the big event, nope, vehicles probably aren't going to work either. No mass transit is going to work. And even if they did, it's pretty well known that what things are like, even trying to flee when there's like a hurricane evacuation. Imagine if there's no traffic lights working. There's going to be clogging. There's going to be accidents. Not to mention that if it's after the main part of the disaster, trees are going to be blocking all the roads. There's just not going to be that much travel. So no, I'm not terribly worried about this at all. Last question we'll get to here. All these folks that are on our side and quiet, the folks at NASA, the folks at different universities, different professors, the ones who um, know what's going on and can't talk in their own department about it. Why aren't they speaking in public? Why aren't they? Because of the same reasons why they're not able to talk about this in their department. Or the same reasons why they'll never get funding to look into things like this. You know, all you have to do is take a look at the two individuals who published that paper with me now seven years ago. 
One got run out of Ohio State. The st- he was the head of the statistics department. He was so bashed by this entire process that he now either denies that it ever happened, even though his name is on the paper, or he tries to speak ill of me in the entire process. The other one, the NASA scientist, Kong Papu Yen, my other co-author on that paper, very quickly, he was no longer at NASA and he's no longer in the United States. He's back in Thailand working for the government. One thing they all tell me is they know, they can see reading comments, things like that, that our community has this general idea of how dangerous it would be for them to come out publicly. They all tell me we have no idea. It would be far worse than we even realize it would be. It's more than just the fact that many of them are still paying off their graduate loans. They're paying for their kids to go to college. Many of them have mortgages. You know, most professors aren't rich. Um, A lot of them fear for their safety if they were to come out and discuss some of these things. And so I guess the, the short answer to all of that is a logical individual in our community would have some general sense of why that would be dangerous. But apparently we really don't have any idea how bad it would be. Anyway, I'll see you in the morning for The Daily Show. Be safe, everyone.